So here we have a circuit uh, with both a resistor and a capacitor. So we have a battery and the voltage difference between the positive and negative terminals of that battery is 3 volts in this example. Over on the right hand side there is a resistor and at the bottom of our circuit there is a capacitor. Uh, and over to the left uh, there's a switch which right now is open. So at the moment we do not have a closed circuit, there is no current flowing, and we're essentially looking at this circuit before any of the action happens, before anything interesting starts occurring. Uh, you'll notice that there are several red and blue dots on the two plates of the capacitor. Uh, as usual, blue dots are negative charges, red dots are positive charges. And what we have here is an uncharged capacitor. There is no net charge on either of the capacitor plates. Uh, there are equal numbers of positive and negative charges. And right now, there is no voltage difference between the two plates because they are uncharged, or no net charge. And of course, there are really positive and negative charges everywhere in our circuit. Uh, but in a moment, I'm going to run this as an animation, and it's just too much trouble to try and accurately animate all of the charges in the circuit. So I'm going to focus just on the charges on the capacitor. What we're really interested here is what happens to the capacitor when we close the switch and current starts flowing. How does the capacitor impact the way that our circuit works? Uh, so when we close the switch, again, because I'm not showing all of the charges in the circuit, it will look like charges are appearing out of the battery and other charges are disappearing into the battery. Uh, but really, that's because I'm just showing enough to show what happens to the charges in the capacitor plates. Really, there are charges everywhere in the circuit, and we're just sort of pushing continuously charges through the battery, and other charges are going into the battery and getting involved in chemical reactions, um, and essentially none of that will be shown. So let's close the switch and see what happens. So current starts flowing, so we have electrons coming out of the battery, uh, and as they come around, they're going to start to pile up on the left plate of the capacitor. So there's a gap in between the two capacitor plates, and the electrons can't hop across that gap. So we get negative charges building up on the left side of the capacitor plate, and as that negative charge builds up, they push the electrons off of the right side of the plate. So we see uh, that we're building up a net negative charge on the left side of the capacitor, and a net negative charge on the right side of the capacitor. And as this happens, the voltage difference across the capacitor is increasing. As we build up a charge on the sides of the capacitor plates, the voltage difference between those two plates increases. And at this point you'll notice that current has stopped flowing. So right now the voltage difference between the two plates of the capacitor is equal to the voltage difference between the two terminals of the battery. Uh, the, the voltage difference across the battery is 3 volts, and the voltage difference across the capacitor is 3 volts. At this point, the capacitor is fully charged, as charged as we can get it with the current battery, and no more current is flowing. Uh, let's watch this animation once more and see what happens to the speed of the charges as we start charging up the capacitor. So here we're back to our uncharged uh, capacitor, equal numbers of positive and negative charges on each plate, and our switch is open. So we close the switch and let current start flowing. And in the beginning, we can see that current is flowing pretty quickly. But with each charge that comes around, the speed of the charges decreases. And this makes sense because we're starting to build up a net negative charge on the left plate of the capacitor. And of course, electrons are going to repel each other because they're all negatively charged. So as we build up that negative charge on the left plate of the capacitor, it becomes more and more difficult to push extra electrons onto the capacitor. And so everything slows down, the current slows down because the electrons are being repelled by that negative charge of the capacitor. And similarly, the electrons that leave the right side of the capacitor are being attracted by the positive charge on the right plate, and so they leave more slowly. So here we are back to a fully charged capacitor, 3 volts difference between the two capacitor plates. And we can understand why current has stopped flowing at this point by comparing the voltage at different points in the circuit. So if our battery has a voltage difference between the two sides of 3 volts, then we can think of 
the negative side of the battery as being at a voltage of zero volts. And the negative side of our capacitor is again also at zero volts. Now we know that if there's a voltage difference, that's going to mean that there's an electric field and that electric field will exert a force on charges. And if there's a voltage difference, there's going to be a force making charges move. But here, because there's no voltage difference between the left side of our battery and the left side of our capacitor, there's no force there to try and push the electrons to move at all. And so current has stopped flowing. Similarly, the right side of our battery, we can think of as being at a voltage of 3 volts, and the right side of our, side of our capacitor is also at a voltage of 3 volts. So on the right side of the circuit, there is also no force uh, to make charges move anywhere. So once the battery, or excuse me, once the capacitor builds up a voltage difference between the two plates that is equal to the voltage difference of our battery, the current stops flowing. And before, as one last thing before we get into the math, we can think a little bit about what's going to affect how quickly the capacitor charges up. One thing we know is that resistors slow down charge. So the bigger the resistance, the slower the capacitor is going to charge. Charging up the capacitor requires us to move around some electrons, and the resistor is going to slow down how quickly those electrons move. We also know a little bit about how capacitors work. We know that the voltage difference across the capacitor is equal to the magnitude of the charge on either capacitor plate divided by the capacitance. So a bigger capacitance is going to charge more slowly. The bigger the capacitance of our capacitor, the more charge we have to cram onto each side to build up a voltage difference equal to the voltage of our battery. So the bigger the resistance, the more slowly the capacitor will charge, and the bigger the capacitance, the more slowly the capacitor will charge. In the next video, we'll get into the math.